Yeah, I figured that was your take. So, <laughs> seemed yeah. like yeah, the right thing to do. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, what is ANTP released publicly? Episode all the way up to episode two. Yeah, I checked today on that. Just yeah, to make sure. I thought they were releasing more today. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I think they release on Wednesdays, mm. if I remember right. So, if this was our normal thing, then it would be week three. Whenever you're ready. Well, go into our channel to make sure we're live, and then pff, I typed in heresy and live because I was talking. Hey, you said live. I said live, and I typed what I wrote. I'm going to share. See, I'm live now. Did you share anywhere? I shared this morning. I was like, we are going to be doing a show today. Here it is. <laughs> this is the time. Come join us. Okay. Page. Here's one hearsay. Hope this I can will get be through this interesting. Quick. Okay. Uh, three, two. Devil is amongst us. Stay back, boy. This calls for divine intervention. I kick ass for the Lord. What? I can't hear them. Or I, I was you doing the, the the bumpers or? Yeah, you didn't hear it. No. Hmm. <laughs> Discord has been giving me so much grief lately. It's on. It went through there. Okay. Here's where we have the technical difficulties part of the show. And this video. Oh, because it's set up <coughs> default set a loop back. Okay, can you still hear me? I can. Diamond Club hopes I you can. have enjoyed this program. <laughs> I heard that as well. Okay. It was it was Discord deciding to just change the settings because it felt like it. So All right. We'll so start again. Retake. <laughs> Three, two. Devil is amongst us. Stay back, boy. This calls for divine intervention. I kick ass for the Lord. Boy, these conservatives are really something, aren't they? They're all in favor of the unborn. They will do anything for the unborn. But once you're born, you're on your own. Pro-life conservatives are assessed with the fetus from contraception to nine months. After that, they don't want to know you. They don't want to hear from you. No nothing, no natal care, no daycare, no Head Start, no school lunch, no food stamps, no welfare, no nothing. If you're pre-born, you're fine. Fine. If you're preschool, you're fucked. George Carlin. I strongly support Roe v. Wade, which guarantees a constitutional right to a woman to make the most instrument intimate the most difficult in many cases decisions about her health care that one can imagine hillary clinton let's talk about the possible removal of roe v wade welcome to heresy and hearsay a podcast to reclaim faith in the context of political discussion i'm reverend barney and you can follow me at so seth roth I I on twitter and you can also follow the show's twitter by just looking for heresy and hearsay heresy and hearsay has a podcast <clears throat> site that you can find us or a patreon podcast a patreon site that you can find us at patreon.com slash heresy and hearsay where you can find our past shows as ways to help us just two dollars a month goes a long way to help us make this humble show and my co-host and season four contestant on america's top podcaster and a force of nature in her own right september hi this is september or nine of twelve and you can follow me on twitch and twitter at nine of twelve that's N-I-N-E-O-F-1-2. 
I'm also a co-host of the Geek Grills podcast and the Part-Time Gamers podcast. Welcome to our Twitch channel. You can contribute here with bits or subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. If you can follow the show on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all the podcast catchers, just look for Heresy and Hearsay. So please like, share, follow, subscribe, etc. Please give us a review. Um, that really helps others find us. And we also have a website where you can listen to our past shows and find bios about each of us at heresyandhearsay.com. And I also want to add that September has her own website for all her podcasts and her bio. And you can find that at 9 of 12. That's N-I-N-E-O-F 12.com. It's all there. So, <laughs> so uh, normally we would do a mental health check, but it's been a while since both of us have been together first off and second off. This topic uh, has not been well on my mental health. How about you? I've been too busy to rage on it too much. <laughs> well, I, congratulations. I, Here's our show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you called me and uh, my new friend Amy from the, the Frog Pants Network was raging about it on her page because we're, we're Facebook friends now. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I, I wanted to do a show about this and I needed your voice because, well, I don't have a uterus. So uh, I, I would feel very unequipped to handle certain topics about this. You know, I have my own rage. But before we do that, before we get in the show, um, as always, Brother Bowie, will you lead us in a word of prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, uh, as most of the American political world knows, uh, last night a uh, draft opinion was leaked uh, to Politico uh, and has been now confirmed by uh, Justice Roberts that it is a leaked uh, draft of the opinion mm -hmm. for them basically overturning Roe v. Wade. And it's not like, oh, it's a wishy-washy thing. No, they swung for the fences on this. Uh, Politico links to the documents, and a lot of people have done analysis smart, far smarter than I am as far as looking over the, uh, the opinion. And it is definitely there. It definitely brings up that Roe should be overturned, that... Uh, what is uh, par Planned Parenthood versus Casey or the other way around Casey versus Planned Parenthood? One of the two uh, should also be overturned because it is not codified in law. It is not in the Constitution because uh, abortion wasn't something that was widely discussed. And therefore, and the Constitution was written by, oh, shocker, men. So, of course, it's not in the bloody Constitution. I'm, Okay, I'm already getting angry, and I haven't even started yet. But I want to state that this is a draft opinion. This is not the official release. That's not expected to come out until the end of June, the 1st of July. So this could cause a change. I doubt it with the people that are voting for it. Uh, those who have been, you know, watching the courts and no political stuff knows that this was unfortunately coming well they have uh, definitely been working on it i mean bit by bit chipping away i mean they hope they've always hoped for the overturning roe v wade but in this you know they've been going around it uh with different laws in different states as much as they can in the meantime so this is that's why this is so big because uh the, the bright side is it's pushing toward codifying it in federal law and people like Chuck Schumer and President Biden immediately stepped up 
and are trying to get this federal putting it in law to a vote, which would uh, nullify some of the effects of Roe v. Wade, well, but maybe people will realize how much, you know, we have this power as voters. I mean, we need to elect people who uphold this stuff. And if our, our senators and our Congress people are very, very important. That, that is extremely true. And like it should not when, have to go to the Supreme Court, right? They've been spending years and years putting these little bit by bit, picking away at it laws in states where you have to go and get a freaking vaginal ultrasound and wait and go on a waiting list and all that crap to even have this access to your own health care um, to intimidate women and victims of other sorts. And we just then we have to fight back and go through the whole court system. And it's been left to the judicial for too long. A woman's right to her own health care choices should have been protected in federal law, not just you know, relying on reaching the Supreme Court in individual cases forever ago. That is it, correct. <clears throat> Pardon me. Roe should have been codified years ago into federal law. And here's the other problem is, or the other sticking point is, is that there's a, anywhere from 12 to 20 states that have trigger laws already on the books that if Roe gets overturned, automatically makes it illegal to have an abortion. Um, and we'll have articles about some of that in the system here uh, in our notes and stuff. Um, but that is that is one of the things that once this decision is finalized, then there are, are a number of states that are going to make it illegal. I believe it's to, 20. Um, 20 would, would a, in, somewhere around 20 I heard on NPR today would be immediately just yeah and I think Oklahoma just signed into law today the governor just signed into law a six week uh, abortion ban which is basically <laughs> fucking bullshit <laughs> as, as a woman who is who has had children how long did it normally take you to figure out that you were pregnant? In one case, it took four months. See, and by the, and, and, and that's the thing is, is that especially if a woman who's had a, a child or two beforehand, they don't. Some of them don't typically have like the morning sickness symptoms and stuff like that, so they don't know uh, until like, oh, what the fuck. <laughs> What the hell is this? Uh, you know, um, and most women don't find out well until well past six weeks before they realize that there's a possibility they could be pregnant. Well, yeah, and, I mean, you're not even yeah. going to miss a cycle for like four weeks if you even miss a cycle. Because that's another thing. There's any number of, I mean, women that are regular every 28 days are rare almost. <laughs> And any with any, anyone with any kind of you know complications like PCOS, I mean, there there's just there's not a way to really know. And and here's the thing. So this keeps being brought up, and and I vasectomies are reversible. Yes. So why? It's about controlling women. It's about it our is. right to our own health care. And that's a big thing about Roe v. Wade that people never really understood. All the other things it's related to um, that we're given the choice in, in controlling you know, our, our lives and our livelihood, but a very personal medical decision. I mean, it's just someone else can't decide for you was what was decided in, in a much broader range than just abortion. Overturning this has a myriad of, of, of detrimental effects. I, I, I posted a Twitter thread that, that will be in our notes as well of someone who, who knows the machinations of Greg Abbott, uh, the, governor, uh, the less than honorable governor of Texas, 
and basically what this will open up because so much of this depends on the right to privacy. That's what Roe mm-hmm. was based on. That's what, you know, uh, the decision is, is, is that he's basically, you know, he's set that if this is the case, then he can try to overturn gay marriage as well. And because it's a right to privacy and it's not, and that is something that is actually talked about in the decision that that right to pri- that right to gay marriage sh- should not have uh, passed as well that it should be uh, that it was not constitutional to have the court decide that uh, that is one of, yeah so <laughs> yeah because you know everyone being created equal is not in the constitution or anything right uh, they they really want to deny the living document aspect to the extent that. Uh, people like women are property and people of color are only a portion of a person like is that that's his conclusion instead of moving it toward like everyone is created equal uh basically yes uh, i'm just that's horrifying just and yes <laughs> same-sex marriage is definitely next on the chopping block as well as contraceptives <sighs> is also on the chopping block as well um, because that is also a right to privacy, and that uh, and Gris, uh, what was it, Griswold versus Connecticut? Well, in fact, I'm remembering the Griswold versus mm. Connecticut was about that, and that was the setup for Roe v. Wade, which was also a right to privacy thing, because Gris, uh, because it was a case where a married couple wanted to have contraceptive. It was illegal in Connecticut at the time, and the court said no. You can't do that. That is a right to privacy between uh, a, a woman and their doctor on whether they can have birth control. So that also comes under fire, which is pre row but could also then come under fire. And they've already talked about when getting rid of that. Interracial marriage is another right to privacy thing. Uh, lo- uh, Virginia versus loving. Uh, that's another uh, that's another one that is <clears throat> uh, that is a right to privacy that could also come under thing. So, and a lot of the right to privacy stuff as far as the civil rights bill also comes into it. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons because it was voted that it wasn't considered a right to privacy until the civil rights movement and everything else. That's why we had the Jim Crow laws. So we are looking at a fundamental shift because it, this it's because of the way the court stands. And, oh, and I won't get to that in a second. The way the court stands currently and the fact that uh, how the how many absolutely vile individuals have power, DeSantis, Abbott, and so many other governors that can make these, and, and the fact these are red states with with large, largely red uh, congressional house unit, uh, uh, state house, and state senates, that it becomes increasingly difficult for us to do this piecemeal because half the states are going to be just crazy hands may tell bullshit and the other is going is going to be progressive and we can't uh, that is a nation divided and we can't stand that way do we have a link is the political link have the content of the actual draft of the opinion I think it does. Let me okay, because I I'm I heard and I've, I'm reading that they referred to. Yeah, they do. I see the draft in the political article, um, so I will make sure to link that in our notes as well as on a, to our chat. But, um, good God, they reference. <sighs> Be still my heart. They reference. Brown versus Board of Education. So yes. if anyone has any fucking doubt about them going after marginalized groups of people and trying to seek to further marginalize them, comparing it to Brown versus Board of Education. I mean, can I can't wrap my mind around the precedent in overturning precedent in the Supreme Court is always has always been to expand rights. But when you're talking about taking away rights that women have had for like 50 years almost now um, and then taking away rights because they're referring to wanting to reverse um, same-sex marriage and stuff, they're going to 
implement segregation? Like they're seriously referring to Brown versus education versus Board of Education that they could overturn that too because the country would like Kavanaugh, dickhead said, oh the country would be a very different place if we didn't overturn that stuff. Like, what the fuck? Oh. Oh, terrifying. yeah. Wait until we get to our carrot and stick. I have some. I, trust me, there's a lot of rage that I wrote at, at three o'clock in the morning as I'm doom scrolling. <sighs> I really need to stop doing that. Anyway. Yeah, Justice uh, Roberts can eat a bag of dicks, too. Yeah, because he's more concerned about the leak, which. Yeah, which shut up. It should all be it's it's it should all be out there in the public. Not you release your, you know, he wants to do what? release his opinions in the middle of the night and nobody reads that stuff and it'll pass quickly. No, not this time. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one, because, and I honestly think Roberts probably wasn't on the voting side of the majority, but this, but this taints his court. Uh, not, you know, because of the fact, and, and I've been hearing discussions about how this is about the leak is bad as well. And like, I don't give a fuck right now Uh, you know i don't because and this could be uh, someone on the right who leaked it so we don't know that but whoever leaked it you know i don't think it got if there is someone on the right it may get some more of their voters out but damn sure is it going to fire up the the uh the left side of the space and here's the thing 69% of Americans asked of all ages were asked about turning over Roe v. Wade and they all said, no, it should not be overturned. So the, so it's like 28% want it overturned. So it's like 2% are are on the fence. What the fuck? Anyways, uh, the point (laughs) is, is, is that 28% 28% of the people get is, is getting to decide what 69 what the rest of the nation wants because this is this is what they've been wanting for years. I mean, I remember the fights when I was younger. But it's never been this codified and this horrible that is just I I they got what they wanted at least in one front which was when they got a Republican in the White House and they controlled the House and the Senate, they could get their justices. And they fucking got three of them. Yeah. But her but After her emails. After obstructing Obama's appointment, then pushing through their appointments um, way closer to elections when they claimed that was why they didn't, you know, want to confirm any justices. And... During the last cycle, do you remember how much they accused Democrats of like, you can't vote for them because they're going to try and create, have more justice. They're trying to pack the courts. They're packing the courts. They want to pack the courts while they were literally packing the Supreme Court. Oh, I am. All, I am all for expanding court at this point. I am. Oh, oh yes. That that's. I have a section of, of actionable or, or things that can be done because I honestly, you know, because the part of the show is to create action but uh but yes but the thing is is that and that's one of the things i wanted to hit on is the fact that roe huge big deal but it is it is the foundation of so many of our other laws or our other not laws but our other like gay marriage and and equal rights and and everything else that is built on because of that right to privacy that it once that pillar once that falls the house will crumble and there will be governors going after gay marriage, going after segregation, going after interracial marriage, going after uh, all of this stuff. And this is, you know, this is what they want. They, they knew that Roe, if it fell would cause a ripple effect for all these other laws. <clears throat> and people need to there is, people just need to be. Like I'm looking at the opinion, he literally says, it is time to heed the Constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Folks, Senate and congressional elections are happening. Like now. 
There are right. primaries going on. And then November, like, this is important. So let's get to that. So, cause I got, I got a, I got a scree. So forgive me. So this show is not just about uh, what's going on, but also actions that be, can, can be taken. So what can we do? Well, fucking vote, hold your nose and vote for the lesser of two evils. You selfish tossers. The parties aren't the same. And if you think they are, you are either smoked too much weed in college or you ha aren't smart enough to, to, or you aren't smart. One party is continually attacks women, LGBT, and BIPOC, and another, and anyone who doesn't fit into their narrow patriarchal society, who, by the way, is also try is also try is tried and still trying to overturn the election to install a fascist, misogynist to tosser. And the other party is trying to save the fucking world, but her emails, fuck you. Yes, Reverend Barney wants to bring hellfire and brimstone down to all those that sat at home in 2016. And those who encourage this TYT, Jimmy Dore and the Bernie bros, fuck you too. You have no right to be upset about this ruling when you told millions of your listeners not to vote for Clinton because she wasn't left enough. You allowed the GOP and the orange Mussolini to get into power and to pick three fucking justices because you are too short sighted to see how important the courts are. There is nothing in the Bible about abortion. And in fact, there are steps on how to do one numbers five. You can just look that up and don't give me this John Baptist jumping in the, his mother's womb. That is a flimsy excuse since it was brought up uh, uh, both on a theological and a science level. Do you have anything to add, September, before I have a stroke? Nope. <laughs> I know. The other things that, that can be done uh, is the Boston Globe put out an opinion piece about expanding the court, which is needed to be done for some time. We have 12 circuits, so there should be 13 justices on the Supreme Court at this point. It has should have been. And this is something Congress <clears throat> could have done and can still do. This is something that needs to be done. The other thing uh, is codify uh, Roe v. Wade into law of the land. No matter uh, what, if the people want, uh, if the people get in the way with the filibuster, get rid of it. I'm tired of it. Push mansion, push cinema, you know, get this done. I know at that point it becomes a tennis ball, and if the Republicans ever take power again, which is a possibility with the craziness in this nation, but if they do, they can always unreverse it. But something needs to be done. Uh, you know, and you need to first off, we need to vote. We need there are Senate seats that are going to be up for re-election. There's one here in North Carolina. There are many in other states that we can take. And we need to take no matter what, because we need to, first off, make sure that cinema and mansion don't have this kind of power where they took away the, the rights of voting. Fuck, you know, uh, and, and wouldn't codify voting rights in this nation. So we need to make sure we have a 60 majority so they can be fucking silent and not do anything and just sit there and, and draw their money. That is one thing. We also need to make sure we hold the house. We need to make sure of that. And we and at this point, those are the two big things. Sp expanding the court would be a great idea at this point. We need to do that. It needs to be done. Um, I think. Tell me what your thoughts are, September. I think for the sake of representation it should have been made larger yes some time ago um unfortunately the argument only ever comes up when one side or another you know the court seems to be leaning all over the place and it should not do that anyway like it's It's too late for the for the, for us to wish that the that the Supreme Court wasn't politicized. It is. Yeah. That is a 
that is a thing we and just I don't have to think deal with. making the number of justices greater is going to fix that though. So that needs to be fixed by just people. Well, gerrymandering is one of the biggest problems, and I think that's something that should be federally dealt with, so that elections are more fair and honest, and then the representation um, by the senators and and such that are confirming the justices are more representative of our population. Like it really starts so locally. All of this, the poor representation has led to an elite class of people being able to use these divides and uh, manipulate one issue voters, which is what's going to happen here. I do not have a lot of hope that um, it's going to turn out the left enough to be able to get this done. The, the Congress and Senate need to ask, act immediately to, to fix this into federal law and, and create these protections that immediately, which is something that our politics can't handle because uh, of the representation being so poor. And it's going to get worse because in a couple of states, they gerrymander, uh, gerrymander things so badly that they created more safe districts. They created districts that only one party can win in. I'm running in one. I mean, not for Congress, but for, you know, NC House. And like the they drew it so it's registered voters are like at a 70-30 ratio. It's not a percentage split. Like, how the hell are you going to win that? Well, appeal to everyone. Oh, sure. If I had a million dollars and... Probably still not then, because people are in this one-issue mindset, and that's why this Roe v. Wade thing has been a harbinger uh, for so long, and so much has kept hanging on it, but the the con- Congress has not been able to get off their asses and codify it into law, because they, they don't want to take on, they don't want to risk their seat in office by taking on the issue and putting the bills on the floor to get these protections into federal law. (coughs) Excuse me, because it risks all those fucking one issue voters who don't often realize the wide ranging effects. All they see is I don't believe in abortion. I, I got accosted outside a benefit for Habitat for Humanity years ago that Elizabeth Dole was speaking at because I was out there trying to get people to register to vote and I had Kucinich stuff on my vehicle and people started screaming baby killer at me and accusing me of you know being pro-abortion and shit like no one's pro-abortion and screaming vulgarities at me like good Christians they were uh, while I had my kids in, in the car, in car seats right there with me. And, but they're all fired up. And then, and then they're giving money to a good cause that I believe in. And then singing their hymns. But I had to leave and couldn't register anyone else to vote because I was being violently, verbally abused in front of my children. <sighs> So, yeah, the solution to this divide and the people that are manipulating people with it and abusing it is to educate oneself, to have empathy, true empathy for other people, and, I mean, understand the consequences that will come with removing the rights of other people. How can you not see that as wrong? Do unto others, motherfuckers. Come on now. That's rule one. Yeah. So Nobody I have a story. wants to take away your rights. <clears throat> no one wants Correct. to take away your rights. If you don't want an abortion, you don't have to have one. That's perfectly fine. You just don't take away other people's rights. I so I have the most Go heinous ahead. argument today. Um, I think it was a TikTok somebody posted, but like they were arguing about abortion rights in Ohio and the gentleman was talking about um, like a 13 year old, right? Being forced to carry 
this felon rapist child to term is being as being the consequences of this sort of thing and more often than not those rapists of those young girls are family on top of it so there was a woman I really struggle to call her that whose argument was that but that's this opportunity to rather than take a life because that argument that you're taking a life because you're flushing a zygote is disgusting to begin with but this opportunity that this young girl has to to either give away or let a family raise their family raise this person who could become a wonderful they could cure cancer someday you know instead of just killing some, uh, you know someone and good lord are you kidding me like the, the and, and the argument you know was so aptly put where like the mental and emotional damage and 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 the child abuse that so often I mean are people gonna go ahead and step up and who's gonna take care of all these children no one your George Carlin co- quote was spot on and we've seen it again and again in conservative legislating that they don't give a shit uh, once the baby's born I mean we'd have health care right uh, as a right and we don't it, would it cost to have a baby is painful even with insurance a lot of the time uh, and this woman I, I, was I, I, saying like well having an abortion isn't going to heal those scars either so she should just have to do it like so what so first off this child's fucking 13 motherfucker what the fuck really that you're going to do that that to, to a 13, 13 year olds don't even know what have you not seen turning red? Thirteen-year-olds, ah, uh, fuck! I'm so angry at that. Holy, okay. <clears throat> and having okay. been had a baby myself when I was sixteen, and given her up for adoption, and I only got to meet her a few years ago, and I am glad, and I have a great amount of healing from that. I know people who will never have that, can't have that. Um. But it's not like the scars are gone from having to make that decision from 33-ish years of every day wondering whether I had done the right thing um, of living without her. Uh, I mean... (sighs) I, I know this is a hard question because of the fact that you've reconnected but if you had the opportunity would you have taken the choice in that instance no um with my daughter and my only daughter (laughs) all my rest are sons uh that was the case in which i didn't know i was pregnant until i was like four and a half months ish Um, okay because i was very ill and things don't always work right when you're sick. And I had been kicked out of my house and was living on someone's couch. And any number of reasons, I, I didn't get diagnosed until a doctor finally asked if it was possible. Um, and I had been given medications and had weird reactions to them and all kinds of things. So, And I did explore the option of abortion. And because it was late enough in the term, it was going to be... Um, uh, 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 basically the later term heinous like you have to they basically inject things into the womb so that the fetus is killed even though it, it, it wasn't a term enough that it could have survived outside the womb but they still they terminate and then they do a DNC and right. I had an appointment and I was going to and I could not. 
my conscience would not let me. I was so Catholic at the time. That was definitely a pressure. Um, but I was also facing the fact that I was living in a very abusive household. When I found I was pregnant, I did move home uh, and with uh, the abuse situation. Uh, but I decided to go ahead with the pregnancy and um, the same doctor that determined I was pregnant uh, helped me find someone who would adopt. And so I went through all that. However, in later years when I was waitressing, barely scraping by, living uh, in someone else's house, um, I had a, an oops <laughs> uh, when I stand with someone I had known for most of my life and I apparently can never have unprotected sex without getting pregnant and um, I immediately was like and, and there wasn't such a thing as this was like the early 90s right we didn't have morning after right. options it didn't exist and I just immediately like in a week went to the doctor and got a test and I did uh, abort at one point. I, I was not ready to raise a child. I was well aware it was just a little bundle of cells at that point. You know, I checked immediately because I had made one mistake and I am an unlucky person. And, uh, I spoke to my friend and I was like, you want to pitch in? Uh, he didn't. Um, I had to borrow some money from my father which caused us to not speak for a long time. and But it was the right thing to do. And then when I was 26, I had a good job. <laughs> I had a good job. Um, I had pregnant with my son, my eldest son. And I was like, I'm doing this. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I'm gainfully employed. I got fired. when I As soon as I fired my uh, filed my maternity papers, because that's a fucking thing. But I got by. I was a single mom on welfare for a couple of years. Dug myself out of that hole. Um, and and he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's 26 now. I've had two more children since I got married. I didn't get married until I was 31. And we decided, you know, all right, now I've got a... I didn't think I wanted any more kids. But then it was like, I have a life partner now. I have a support system now. You know... I definitely would like to have more. And uh, and we had two more sons together. So I, I've run the gamut. <laughs> well, um, But I, the choice has allowed me to have I li- the life I have today. Right. I, I don't know that when I was, you know, that couple of years younger, um, or what it would have done to me to try and raise my daughter on my own when I was 16. Or kept and stayed, end up staying in that abusive household for God knows how long, how much more damage everyone would have suffered. Right. Yeah. And here's something else that I, I want to also propose. For those women who who want to be sterilized, and I have we have an individual that we both know that mm-hmm. went through so much shit just to get that done because they never wanted it they never want to have children they knew that from an er from an early age on they were terrified of being pregnant um that you know and they fought with doctors after doctors oh my god that That shit is terrible and even with the laws that are in the books now that are being threatened like women's access to health care is all the time we're treated like we're not allowed to make those decisions or we're just fucking hysterical and, and women want to get sterilized and they don't want to have a baby. And it's like, well, are you sure? And, oh, well, no, you're not a certain age yet. And oh, does your husband know? Or, oh my God. No, they don't. it doesn't fucking matter if their husband or boyfriend or, or life partner or whatever fucking knows they want to, they want to do this. They've made that decision. And they have to live with it. it. Like, why would you want, why would you want to force anyone who does not want children to have to have children or to remain capable of it so that what? So that they have to be subjected to whatever 
rape baby they end up with because I'm sorry, so many men are terrible that we do live in fear way too often. I just went on a trip with about a hundred people I met up with in Vegas that I trust and love. And there was still a group of us that were like, and thank you, Bobby, for bringing it up. But me and Bobby and Amy set ourselves up as that safe space. Like, hey, we're going to be having gatherings, you know, near bars and stuff. There's going to be people we don't know around. You can come up to me, no questions asked. Pretend I'm your, you're meeting me there. You know, Bobby's like, pretend I'm your husband, whatever you've got to do. And we created that safe space for people. And it was a really lovely, wonderful thing to do. And I'm so glad that, you know, we have community members who thought of and wanted to do it. But it's heartbreaking that we have to. And we do. Cool. Women do yeah. this for each other all the damn time. There's a reason things like angel shots exist, right? Right. The bartenders Expl have to understand the code that if you order an angel shot, you need, you're being bothered, you're being creeped on. And I mm -hmm. even learned a couple of weeks ago when people were talking about the trip, I didn't even know. And you can't rely on every bartender to know this. But some play, more and more people do know. But there are specific, like, uh, Angel on the Rocks is, you know, I need a cab or Angel straight up, like, call the fucking police. Like, they're her. Yeah. This. This. Yeah, this is. Shouldn't have to be a thing. And I have a friend, a close friend, who recently was followed back from a hotel room bar to her room and assaulted. And she was like in a group of people. They're all staying in the same place. And, you know, this guy was with other people and they're all sitting at the table and talking. And I mean, she, he was with a group of people and she ended up feeling safe. Yeah. And so I have a story. Uh, I had dated a young lady and we were, it didn't work out. We just weren't compatible, but we talked and stuff like that. And she calls me up one day and this was in the early 2000s. And she calls me up and she's like, I need someone to take me to the abortion clinic. And I'm like, Oh my God. what?" And she was dating this guy and, but she wasn't ready to go. And, he was, and she got pregnant, and then he disappeared, of course, because he got what he wanted. So I had to drive her to the abortion clinic and then drive her back home, and she stayed at my house for a couple of days, and then I took her back to her college afterwards to make sure she was okay, and she wasn't. She was, she was raised... Southern Christian evangelical, but she had been physically assaulted and sexually assaulted. And she had to get this done because who she couldn't live with that. She couldn't live with carrying a rapist baby's term to term. And we were lucky that there weren't any pro protesters out that particular day. Cause if there were, we might have a different conversation. I might be, I might've been in prison this entire time because, <laughs> th because this decision was so, she was in so much pain and so traumatic about it. And it hurt her so much and it sucked. And I, I hope she's okay. I haven't heard much from her, uh, since it, but I was there for her and made sure she got there safe. And got back safe. So, there's that. And there's going to be a whole other network. <sighs> I want this stopped. It's already hard to find a place. And there's networks of people trying to get people to other states where it's been banned already. Are having such trouble. And it's going to put so much physical and emotional burden on women who are already suffering. I mean, I...
we have to do better. We have one of the things is to make sure that we vote. Make sure that you get into the local politics. Because it's not just about, it's, it, it starts at the bottom. And that's what's been going on this entire time for the last 30, 40 years is, is that it's been from school boards to municipality uh, 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 governance. And those are just as important as federal elections because they're the ones that write these, tri these trigger laws that will go into effect if Roe v. Ro v. Wade ever is overturned. And, it, and right now, it, as it stands right now, this is what we're looking at is it will be. And then there's 20 states, bam, just like that, no longer allowed to have a, a, a abortion. And here's the thing, and September can also say to this, women will still have abortions in those 20 states. The only difference is whether it's safe or not. That was part of this. Yeah. And and we have to so many of us have grown up I was born in 1974 so this had already been a thing in my world for 50 you know, for 50 almost 50 years now well the Wade was the law of the land <clears throat> and they're stripping away rights and they want to strip away more and you as a listener you as someone in Hearing the sounds of our voices have to vote every election, not just the, the not just every two years. There is an election in most states every year from your city council all the way up. And that is the biggest thing. Is to support candidates who support. The rights of others and and believe that people who are of any gender or any race or any ethnicity or any of this have just as many rights as a, a person who is currently sitting on the courts. So anything you want to add before we go to carrot and stick? No, I'm pretty uh, tapped. I, so I will do the carrot and stick, so because uh, again, it's my anger. Although I have a little and... extra carrot that doesn't have to do with the topic, if you want it. Okay, what is that? Okay. Why don't we? Why don't we play our intro to the carrot and stick first? Okay. What's up, Doc? So we finally have a really cool positive florida man headline <laughs> Ooh, a positive florida let's hear it this man has asked schools to ban the bible in florida following the state's effort to remove books so florida was trying to ban like oh almost all the math books unless you know Ron DeSantis's buddy published them and they claimed it was because they had like race theory in it like oh my gosh so anyway <laughs> um Lots of other books being banned, but so this guy has, he's got a petition and he wrote up a whole thing and he's trying to, um, get the Bible banned in all schools, um, questioning whether the Bible is age appropriate, pointing to his casual references to murder, adultery, sexual immorality, and fornication. Do we really want to teach our youth about drunken orgies? Yes. <laughs> Have, has anybody read the Song of Psalms uh, or so, uh, Song of Solomon? Holy crap, that is just full of sex. It's just uh, so. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a perfect one. So, I Mr. Have, Mr. Stevens in Florida, thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, the current I was going to give is to the person that that leaked this. That maybe maybe the backlash could change the vote and make it not so bad and make it you know, where it doesn't happen. I doubt it, but there hope springs eternal and I'm the cynic. So I'm hopeful <laughs> as for the stick to Susan Collins. Fuck you for allowing a rapist man, baby to get placed into the highest court of the land and thinking he wasn't going to overturn Roe. 
fuck you also for cutting my shirt. Fuck you, uh, Mansion and Cinema, for being assholes. I have a whole lot of fuck yous just to give out. <laughs> so, that's our show. T- I want to thank September for coming back from her hiatus for this episode. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to publish a couple of things in the next week as well. Uh, so the show will be back on schedule. Uh, with that being said, um, I want to thank you for joining us at Heresy and Hearsay. I'm Reverend Barney, and you can follow me on uh, Twitter at Seth Roth II. You can also find the show on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, any podcast catcher, as well as our website. Just Google us. Don't forget our Patreon, where two dollars a month keeps this show going. And and this is how I'm also paying my bills. So any help can help. And I'm September. You can find everything I do at nineof12.com. That's n i n e o f one two dot com where you can see all the shows that I'm doing right now. So thanks for listening today, and bless your hearts. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program.